What's up folks, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys are having an awesome Christmas. And this is a budget-oriented gaming PC that I wanted to build for a very long time. We have an 8-core CPU in here with 16 threads. We have the brand new Zotex RTX 2070 graphics card. This PC does not cost $2,500. It doesn't even cost $1,000. It's uh, around $965. And the way that we did this is by using some used components. Now, buying used parts for a gaming PC or a productivity machine is always a great option if you want to get the most bang for the dollar. So eBay and Craigslist are certainly your friend. And the way that we got this chip is by way of the uh, Xeon E5 2670 processor. It's a server-grade CPU that originally uh, came out back in 2012 and it got discontinued in uh, 2015. It has eight cores, 16 threads, can turbo up to 3.3 gigahertz. You can go 3.4 or 3.5 if you want to push the overclock. Uh, but uh, this processor, incredibly, we only got for under $60 a few years back. You could still get it for around $60 to $80 if you're looking on uh, eBay or Craigslist uh, these days. The real trick is getting the right uh, motherboard for it. It uses the 2011 socket. We're using the Asus Sabertooth X79 board. We are using DDR3 memory in here, which is, again, uh, dirt cheap. You can buy like 16 gigabytes for under $30. And uh, in terms of the, some of the other parts that we have, have over here we have the Fantex Eclipse P300 case which is about $60 awesome case great build quality RGB lighting has a glass uh, cover on it as well so you can display your internal components really nicely we're using the 500 watt EVGA PSU which is around $37 I believe as well and a $30 Cooler Master uh, cooler uh, it's the uh, Evo 212 and uh, in terms of the SSD we're using a 500 gigabyte storage uh, which is around $58 you can find a whole bunch of SSDs these days for dirt cheap if you don't want that much capacity you can probably save a little bit of money now uh, the awesome thing about this build is minus the GPU the cost of the entire system is $365 now you can buy an RTX 2070 for uh, under $500 if you want a more basic one this amp extreme edition of the RTX 2070 has a little bit more of a higher factory overclock has a little bit more power headroom so you can really push uh, the uh, memory and uh, the GPU clock a little bit higher than most of your reference grade RTX 2070s resulting anywhere between 3 to 4% uh, performance increases. Now if you want to get a more reference grade RTX 2070 you can definitely find one in fact from Zotec uh, for under uh, $500 and that would mean that you would bring this uh, total system cost down to around $865 which is definitely a smoking deal and uh, compared to something like uh, a GTX a 1080 Ti, which these days, even in the used market, is around or if not more than what the uh, 2070s uh, go for. So I would still probably go with a 2070 over uh, a 1080 Ti at this point of the game, unless you get a great deal on a 1080 Ti, and that's always dependent upon where you're finding these particular deals, especially with used components. Uh, but let's get into uh, some of the benchmark results of the CPU performance and the GPU performance so you can determine whether this thing is right for you and whether you want to head down this direction. So let's get right into that. Now we did a very mild overclock to the E5 2670 processor. Stock frequency is about 3.3 gigahertz on its turbo end and uh, we just uh, pushed it to about 3.4. I did manage 3.5 in the past but it's kind of unstable and it's been a couple of years since this thing has been used and plus it's a server grade CPU. It's not really designed for overclocking uh, but uh, basically at 3.4 gigahertz we got a Cinebench score of 1060 Definitely not bad. Now just for fun, we're going to do a little comparison between a modern 8-core Intel chip, the 9700K processor, overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz, score around 1682 points. So pretty big difference between the two, but keep in mind I only paid $60 for the Xeon chip and you're looking at over $400 for the 9700K. Now the single core performance on our Xeon chip isn't the best. If you take a look at Geekbench, we're only getting under 3,000 points versus you're looking at over 6,300 points on the 9700K. 9700K. And in terms of the multi-core performance, you're looking about 17,000 points on the Xeon versus over 30,000 points on the 9700K. Now for the GPU setting, we use Zotex Firestorm Utility, which has an OC scanner built in, which will self overclock your graphics card for you. For our specific test, we just pushed the uh, GPU clock plus 30 megahertz and we pushed the memory clock plus 600 megahertz to get our benchmark results. And firstly, uh, when we take a look at TimeSpy, our overall score is around 
849 with the GPU and CPU overclocked. Uh, that's with our budget oriented system and with the 9700K processor coupled with the RTX 2070, we got a score about 9141 points. And just for fun, we'll also throw in an RTX 2080 with a 9700K processor, which in the same scenario scored around 9398 points. And this is a uh, computer that costs over $2,000. So uh, more than double of what our budget oriented system costs. Now next for our real world gaming benchmark results, we're going to take a look at two different resolutions. Uh, so a 3440 by 1440, that's the ultra wide quad HD standard and 3840 by 2160, the ultra HD standard. Firstly, taking a look at Battlefield 5 with ray tracing off because that completely kills the performance of uh, most of your systems out there. But we're looking on 81 average FPS on the ultra wide standard and about 51 on the 4k standard which is definitely not bad for our budget oriented system and if we look at the 9700k in the same exact scenario you're looking at 86 fps for the uh, ultra wide and about 54 fps in the 4k so not a huge difference coming from the xeon chip to the modern 9700k on battlefield 5 next on shadow of the tomb raider at very high details you're looking at 55 fps on the ultra wide and about uh, 42 fps on the 4k which is certainly not not mind-blowing but you could definitely lower the uh, details uh, to get better uh, playable frame rates uh, but on the 9700k it's not that much better you're looking at 61 fps on ultra wide about 46 fps on 4k far cry 5 ultra details 63 fps ultra wide 44 on 4k on our xeon processor and you're looking at 74 fps on the ultra wide and about 50 fps on our uh, 4k for the 9700k last is uh, an oldie but a goodie a Project Cars, the original, uh, you're looking at about 88 FPS on the ultra wide, 61 FPS on 4K with our budget gaming system, and about 94, 64 FPS with our RTX 2070 coupled with the 9700K. But really on that guys that's really it overall i'm super satisfied with this build i would definitely use it as a daily driver in terms of what we're getting in terms of the performance level uh, this processor is still sensational the e5 2670 uh still these days you can pick one up for under 80 dollars. that's pretty much uh, guaranteed and if you do find a good motherboard uh, to match the processor it's a win-win situation for pretty much 99 percent of people out there certainly if you're gaming it's a no-brainer and the rtx 2070 uh certainly from a price to performance ratio is uh, definitely fairly competitive in terms of a contemporary GPU that you can get these days. You can certainly find great used options as well, but in terms of brand new, uh, definitely an awesome solution, especially if you're going to do some high resolution gaming. I would probably not use this uh, for a 4K gaming setup, although 4K gaming is kind of pointless in my opinion, but definitely for an ultra wide screen, 3440 by 1440 resolution monitors, this is going to be a great system that I'm going to use with my BenQ monitor uh, going forward. Uh, but definitely love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you were to get a uh, gaming uh, system that's under a thousand dollars, what kind of parts would you go for? Would you go use? Would you go brand new? Definitely love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't seen our two thousand dollar gaming build using brand new components, definitely do so. You'll check that out on the channel. Make sure you have notifications turned on so that way you can watch our videos once they become uploaded. I want to thank you guys so much for watching thanks for your support and we'll see you later take care